Hi, I'm Ryan Rungi with AECTEarthBlock.com. Today, we're analyzing some soil samples from a potential customer in Tennessee. He sent me three different soil samples off his land, and he wanted me to see about what clay content it is and see if it's viable for making compressed earth blocks. So what we've done here is just a really basic test. Uh, we put dry soil in a jar, mark where the, the level is, top it off with water, shake it up, let it settle over a day, and then we can see about how much clay we've got. The clay will settle in a layer at the top. Um, below that will be fine sand and then more and more coarse sand, and if you have it, aggregate at the bottom. So that's what we've done here. So I'm ready to kind of take a look. I've put a mark here where I think the clay layer is, and from that we can get a rough estimation of about what clay percentage we're working with. So let me just show you that real quick. So on this first sample, what we've called sample one, you've got roughly a half inch of clay in this bed of soil that's roughly two and three quarters inches. So I think it shakes out to something like 17 or 18% clay. On this sample, sample number two, uh, it's settled a little bit since I made the mark, but it, it's roughly a half inch of clay in a two and a half inch bed of soil. So 0.5 over 2.5, tells us that this is about 20% clay. That's a really nice spot to be in clay-wise for making compressed earth blocks. We, we always say anywhere between 12 and 35% clay will help you make uh, good compressed earth blocks. This is right on the money, roughly 20%. You get too much clay, like, like this sample here, I can't even make out a line. And you can see all the clay that's stuck on the shoulder of the jar here. And this is possibly pure clay. And that doesn't make for a good earth block. It definitely doesn't make for a good cement stabilized block. Um, unstabilized, it's just a little bit hard to work with. It, it, they'll possibly crack. It's just real sticky. It won't flow through the machine. So these are the type of soils that you would probably want to gravitate towards for making compressed earth blocks. It's got a little bit of sand and a little bit of small aggregate to give it some structure. It's got just enough clay to act as a binder and um, you know, act as a glue to keep the block together. Again, you can see a little bit of clay up here on the shoulder, but not as drastic as this one. So that just gives a rough estimate of how much clay we have. And from there, we get a little more sophisticated with our small block press that we make at AECT. And with this, we can make a, a small, scaled down uh, block that we can then analyze. We can do a couple things. We can, we can let it dry and then put it back in this device a week later and, and pressure test it and see on the gauge what, what pressure it breaks at. We can also put that block in a bucket of water and let it sit for a few days and see if it, if it holds up. And then uh, going a step further, take that, that wet block and put it back in the, the device and see what pressure it breaks at. And that'll give us um, an indication of whether it can uh, be a stabilized block or not. That's the definition of stabilized, that if, if we can put it in this device and it'll withstand at least 300 PSI of pressure. So the next step is to put some of this soil sample in our small block press and make a small sample block and see if it's gonna have enough binder in it first off, but then secondly, we'll be able to put these sample blocks back in the press a week from now and we'll, we'll pressure test it. We'll put it back on the plate like this, bring the, bring the piston down and read the, the pressure gauge over here as we're, as we're putting pressure on it. And that'll give us a rough estimate of what it can test out at. It's typically over 1,000 PSI, sometimes up to 2,000 PSI. Anything over 300 PSI is viable, um, is, a, is a decent block. So we'll be interested to see what this soil does as far as compression tests. The other thing that we'll do is let one of these blocks sit for about a week and then we'll put it in water and see if it holds up structurally. And that'll tell us if it can qualify as what we call stabilized. And this scenario, this customer is thinking of doing some 8% cement stabilized blocks. So what I've done 
is with one of these samples, put about 8% cement in. So I've got that mixed in, I've got the right moisture. And so now what I'm gonna do is make the first of several small sample blocks. So just to demonstrate how this device works, put the soil in the little breach. Get it roughly level. And then I will put it in. I'll bring the, the press plate down. And I'm gonna bring it up to about 2000 PSI to simulate our, our full size machines. The block has now been formed in the breach. So you can see it there. And now what I'm gonna do is press it out with the eject plate. So you'll see it drop down here in just a second. So there it is. That's our nice sample block with, in this case, this, this sample number three soil. So now we can set that aside, let it dry for about a week, as I mentioned, and then I'll do some further testing on it. So let me just do that one more time. Fill it up with some of my soil sample. for about 2,000 PSI. Switch out the plate so I can eject it. sample to work with here and uh, I'm going to do the analysis on all three of these soils and see which one would work best for this customer. So that's a window into some of the soils analysis we do behind the scenes. Um, thanks for checking in and feel free to check out AECTEarthBlock.com. Thank you.